So I wanted to start this intro into logic by addressing one of the main components which will make up your logical syllogisms. And a logical syllogism is just an argument based on deductive reasoning. And with a logical syllogism, we insert premises. And if we accept all of them, then we have to accept the conclusion. So we insert the premises. If they are all true, we must accept the conclusion or we're being irrational by definition. So in order to understand the logical syllogism as a whole, let's dig into its parts. And basically when you boil and condense everything down, they all fall into axioms and definitions. And I really wanted to study and focus on right now is axioms. So out of the two, we're going to work on axioms today. So what is an axiom? Well, an axiom is a statement that is widely regarded as true without any evidence. So there are a few examples. So I exist, as Rene Descartes said, uh, Descartes said, um, cognito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. We also have the three laws of logic. Law of non-contradiction. Law of excluded middle and law of identity. So the law of non-contradiction says A and not A cannot be true at the same place and same time. So, for instance, someone cannot be a married bachelor. That is a contradiction. They cannot they can be a bachelor at one point and a married person at another point, but at the same time they can't be both a married person and a bachelor. Then we have the law of excluded middle. And it says that either something is true or it's false. It can't be that a proposition is true and its negation is true. So back to the married bachelors, it can't be true that I am also married yet also living a life as a bachelor. I well and see it's very particular because I could be living a life as a bachelor but I wouldn't actually be a bachelor so we have to be really specific when we talk about these rules so basically what the law of excluded middle does is it basically makes a true or false binary that's pretty much the easiest way to think about it now we have the law of identity, and the law of identity says A is equal to A. So we could insert A with anything. Um, a boy is a boy, a dog is a dog, a cat is a cat. And these sort of statements have a special name that come along with them. And this thing is called a tautology. And in math, almost all of our statements are tautologies. They are reinstatements. So when we have an equal sign, so say I was to solve 3 plus 3 is equal to x, that's a tautology because we're going to get one side equal to the other. So I'll solve this for x real quick. We'll get 6 is equal to x. Well, 
if we plug x back into original equation, we'll get 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, which will give us uh, 6 is equal to 6. So all mathematical statements are pretty much tautologies. Almost all of them are. Inequalities would be the one thing that wouldn't be a tautology. So you might be wondering now, if they don't have any evidence, are they true? And the biggest thing about axioms is that they really rely on the pragmatic attributes for which the arguments they use. So if I was to say, um, oh, one second. So here I've drawn a picture of a man. He doesn't throw it at the ground. He just drops, drops a uh, rock. Uh, on the ground and it free falls and we can see through the math that after a while it hits the ground in 0.12 seconds so the math is sort of irrelevant here what I'm trying to show you is the pragmatic uh, attributes to the axioms we used now we have a square going on here, we have multiplication. All these things are not axioms in themselves, but they come from the simplest axiom of a equals a, and that a cannot equal not a. And that if a equals b, then and b equals c, therefore a equals c. So we can get into really complex arguments, and at the end of the day, it all boils down to our axioms, even if they're hiding in the background and we don't even know them. So are axioms true? I don't know if we can say they are absolutely true, but they are widely accepted to be true, and there is such a great amount of predictability that comes from our axioms and almost all of our work has been based off of it and it hasn't been shown to be false yet. There isn't any way that we know of right now to justify them, but we do know that they work. And they produce very, very, very good results. I mean, all of the science and technology we have today are based on these axioms that I've written over here. Uh, a equals A, A does not equal not A. Uh, a equals B, B equals C, therefore A equals C. So while they might not be absolutely true, they might be the th what we might call maximally true. They are maybe the truest things that we've that we know right now. So you might be wondering now, can I assert anything and call it an axiom? Well, you can you're free to call anything and assert anything you want but that doesn't mean that you should or that it'll be sound remember that axioms don't have any justification so if if you assert anything without justification then you have no knowledge of it by definition remember knowledge is defined as justified true belief. Now our axioms are missing the justified part. They are universally accepted as true, but there isn't a way to really justify A equals A, A cannot equal not A. We have no counterexamples to them and their predictability would seemingly justify them, but there is no formal justification. Whereas a claim such as the grass is green um, could be asserted, but it is not sound to do so, and since we should go and investigate the grass uh, and see why the grass is green. So if, we, if all we ever do is assert the grass is green, we really have learned nothing. We haven't gained any knowledge of, of the grass being green. You know, uh, let's... Yeah, no, that's not a good grass. Let me erase that real quick. Let's draw some real grass. Uh, okay. So if I just looked at this grass and saw that it was green and a, 
that would be we, we could we could identify certain parts of what makes a green maybe maybe we'd see the chlorophyll and see that the chlorophyll reflects certain wavelengths of light back to our eye then then we could make a case with justification for why the grass is green and in doing so we would learn more about the grass we would learn um, we would we would have some knowledge content that might further other questions uh, well why why does the light get reflected you know and our knowledge of the thing would actually grow rather than just asserting it and it's much more productive to have knowledge of something than to just memorize a bunch of assertions. So I thought we would uh, take a look at some axioms and try to identify some. Certain things that could be investigated further and certain things that we essentially just hit a wall. So A does not equal not A. This is indeed an axiom. So I'm going to circle it in green. And this is formally law of non-contradiction. Uh, it is what it is. Now, though it be vague, this is another axiom. This would be a tautology or law of identity. So next time you hear someone say it is what it is, you can say, well, it couldn't be anything other than what it is and everybody will hate you. The next one, a door was closed five minutes ago. Well, that's something that we could just assert, but we would be better off if we we can actually go out and investigate that. If someone was claiming that the door was five minutes ago, we might start looking for things and evidence to support that. So this one is not a axiom. Our senses are sometimes reliable. Well, the only way to verify that claim would to be with our senses. So, we it is generally accepted that, yes, this is an axiom. The earth is flat. This is not an axiom. This is a claim that can be investigated. Dinosaurs had scales. Another claim that can be investigated. Um, it's not one that we have to assert. We can have justification. We can understand why dinosaurs had scales if they even had scales. Uh, A equals B. B equals C. Therefore, A equals C. This is uh, one of Lucid's... Uh, uh, what is it? Transitive... property axiom uh, the dog is a golden retriever once again we could probably do a DNA test and have minimal amounts of axioms therefore to have maximal amounts of justification so let's look at addition now addition is something you might think isn't further isn't open to further investigation but if we actually just take our fundamental axioms that we had where we have a is equal to a and we can set up a statement here that says if a is equal to b and we add a c to both sides then the equations should still remain equal and this statement should hold so if we take our 2 is equal to 2 and we add 2 to both sides well then we'll get 4 equaling 4 which is a true statement we can think of 4 as 2 plus 2 and there's a bunch of mathematicals we could tricks we could think of but that is the basis of addition so that means multiplication 5 times 3 which is really 5 plus 5 plus 5 3 times 
they would both equal 15. That means that multiplication is not an axiom either. It is something that's open to a further investigation. So that is axioms. I thought I would give a little insight as we start our adventures in logic. And I hope that summed up everything, no pun intended, and have a great day.